Hi, this is Dr. Kathleen Hallinan, and we are continuing our weight loss vlog. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. I am doing this on New Year's Eve, and as you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, my brother has set me up with some cool new tech. This is my new microphone, and I'm going to be trying to do this as a podcast as well. So we're going to dive into a few things here. I encourage you to think about your New Year's Eve journey, not the destination. This is a process, and um, shout out to... Jordan Peterson, Andrew Huberman, great interview on YouTube if you get a chance. These guys go really deep into the issues of goal setting, dopamine uh, production, uh, reward behaviors. I highly recommend that you check out that interview on YouTube. And we're going to go straight to my list here. The first thing I want to cover is Mindset Over Milkshakes. Great article, great little study that I did find out because of the Andrew Huberman talk. And this was done by a, another colleague of his at Stanford. And the article is in Health Psychology. And this is uh, the abstract, literally. Title is Mind Over Milkshakes. And very interesting. They were looking to see whether or not there is a change that you can measure physiologically, measure in the blood, with regard to ghrelin levels. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. Ghrelin is the hormone that um, starts to go up when you're hungry. It is the hormone that says it's time to eat. And after you eat, it tells you, hey, I had enough. I'm satiated. I'm good. And it drops down so that you don't keep eating. So they wanted to see if there was a difference in how people thought about their food, whether or not their perception of the uh, how, how indulgent or not indulgent the food was, and whether or not that would impact their measurable ghrelin levels. And you would think, come on, right? You know, can, can that really, it's, it's calories in, calories out, right? So they took a cohort of 46 people. And so same 46 people, they didn't, this is one group. And they gave them, at first, a milkshake, and the milkshake was 380 calories. But guess what they did? They lied to them. They did not tell them the true amount of calories in this milkshake. They told them that this first milkshake was a very sensible, quote-unquote, um, milkshake that was only 140 calories. And they measured their baseline ghrelin levels, and they measured their anticipatory about 20 minutes before ghrelin levels, and then they measured ghrelin levels 90 minutes after. And when this group of people was told that this was a very sensible, very reasonable, low-calorie milkshake, the ghrelin levels, they kind of, they plateaued, but they, they didn't really, like, drop off dramatically after the milkshake. Then they took the same 46 people, and the same milkshake, 380 calories. But this time they lied to them again, and they told them that this was a 620-calorie, very indulgent milkshake. Well, very interesting. The ghrelin levels at the same intervals dropped off dramatically. So the mindset that these people had about how indulgent or how many calories this milkshake was caused their ghrelin levels to drop even though it was exactly the same number of calories that they were given before just with different information and i will encourage you to start to look at how you feel about the food you're eating so when i have lunch i will make like i will take some salads some greens throw some shredded chicken on there, some maybe some craisins and some slivered almonds and a little olive oil and that is lunch and I my perception of that as lunch is healthy, good for me, um, very nutritious, good, good protein, good vegetables. However, and, and I feel very satiated by that, that is a good lunch. However, if I were looking at that as, Ugh, I've got to eat another salad and I'm just doing this because I'd really much rather have a cheeseburger or a slice of pizza, but I'm doing this to lose weight, then you can see where your, your whole mindset is off and do not underestimate the power that your, your um, prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that is really more executive function and then looking at things in a very analytical way, 
how that talks back to the part of your brain that is uh, controlling your, um, your appetite. So pay attention to your mindset uh, 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 in regard to the food that you're choosing. And I think actually with that, I'm going to jump right to number four, which is choose foods with no commercials. Um, the food industry is very good at trying to um, get you to eat their stuff. And I will say that anything that has a commercial with it is something that you probably should stay away from. I had a picture here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Um, during the Obesity Week conference, they had a very interesting uh, conference uh, lecture talk on what was being done down in um, uh, Central America with um, limiting advertising on food products. And even when they passed laws saying that they could not put advertisement gimmicks like um, uh, characters like cartoon characters and gifs and things in the food. Um, uh, if you're watching this, you can see, and if otherwise I'll describe for you, these food industry uh, manu uh, marketing people get around that by putting the gifs like attached to the food or putting the cartoon characters actually like on the food itself and not on the packaging because it was uh, packaging laws that were being changed. So um, shame on you, food industry, for doing this stuff and very bad um, behavior on your part. Um, so I would encourage you to look at things that are have no advertisements. And this is a plug for Beachbody. So plugging you, Beachbody and T25. Um, this is their Keep It Real Foods, and this kind of, um, you can see is a lot of food choices ah, that are, you know, chicken, salmon, tilapia, and then very healthy vegetables, um, avocados, some um, things like broccoli and peppers and fruits. You've got um, bananas and watermelon and apples, and how they kind of... Um, kind of mix it all up in different like combinations, but come on, most of these foods you're not going to see commercials for, and that's the whole point. Um, look at your food choices and pick things that there are no commercials for. I have yet to see a commercial for carrots, seriously, and I look every day. So um, keep that in mind. And then number two, back up to number two, do not wait for the motivation fairy to sit on your shoulder. If you're trying to make behavioral changes this year, I'm going to tell you this, make behavior changes, uh, set goals that are so attainable that you cannot fail. I'm going to say that again because it's so important. Make behavior goal changes that are so manageable that you cannot fail to do them because then you are setting in um, into play by setting small attainable goals and then actually completing them, you are boosting your dopamine production. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter in your brain that is motivating and causes you to increase behaviors along that goal. And dopamine also is the precursor to the neurotransmitter that is your own adrenaline, which is epinephrine. Uh, so your own adrenaline. Um, this is the kind of like energy molecule of your brain and energy molecule of your whole body. So start to like think in terms of completing the tasks that you set for your goals. Um, and if you set a goal that's too much, then break it down to its component parts. So if I want to go for a run, I've set a goal. I usually try to run three days a week. And let's say I get home and I'm so tired and I really don't want to go for a run. I have no motivation. Um, our boy bear, our dog bear, he generally tends to help with my motivation. He wants me to go for a run. But if I'm still too tired, I back it off. Then I think, what is the smallest thing? I, I tell myself, at least put your workout clothes on. Just put your workout clothes on. And I will do that. And then, well, now I've got my workout clothes on. Well, I really don't want to run three miles, but maybe I can run one mile with bear. So, okay, I'll run one mile with bear and then if I, then I'll stop. You know what? Lots of times if you actually start to go, 
you feel better. And that's the key that a lot of people um, have, uh, they realize maybe after they get into it, that as you exercise, as you're more active, you feel better. It gives you energy. So even when you're tired, if you get out and you move, you will feel better. So, and oftentimes you'll end up completing your whole workout that you had started to um, do and thought you could never do. So set goals that are so manageable, you cannot fail to do them. And then the last on our list is the terzepatide and sumaglutide. Devil is in the details. Um, these are the two, um, I'll say new, uh, weight loss medications, and they're getting a lot of advertising. I'm seeing so much advertising for them. Um, sumaglutide is Ozempic and um, Wijovi. Uh, they had recently a shortage of Wijovi. Wijovi is just the higher dose that's been approved for weight loss. And uh, it is just the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Terzepatide is two components. It is a GLP-1 receptor agonist and a GIP agonist. So I encourage you always keep with the lowest amount of medication that you can. Use these medications if you're going to use these medications um, after talking with your physician, your healthcare provider. Um, use them only to assist you with all of the lifestyle changes that you need to make. Do not rely on these medications to do it all for you because with the weight loss that you get from using these medications, if you are either unable to get it or if for whatever reason you stop the medication, your weight will rebound back up. These are being talked about as, again, lifelong weight management medications. And so they do certainly decrease um, uh, your gastric emptying. They slow gastric emptying. They improve satiety so you don't feel as hungry. Um, they improve your... Um, body's ability to use insulin. Uh, these are normally secreted by your own gut anyway uh, as a physiologic response to in taking in um, calories and, and food. So we're kind of hijacking the normal normal physiology here. But I, again, I encourage you, please use caution with these and um, remember that the, these should be used as helping with all of your lifestyle changes, not doing it all for you. Um, and it's very encouraging that terzepatide does absolutely have weight loss um, amounts that are in a percentage range that uh, approximate gastric bypass surgery, uh, gastric sleeve. Uh, this, is, this is incredibly um, uh, helpful for people who are really struggling and need the medication to help them. Absolutely. Then use, use these medications to help you get to a place where you can um, feel uh, better, uh, where you're um, healthier in terms of your joints and um, your metabolic risk factors. Uh, but again, keep, keep working on the other things that we've talked about. So you guys are doing great. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, and Happy New Year's and um, keep up the good work. You guys are doing great. Thanks.